Hello, my fellow lifeforms, and welcome back. Let's talk about the Carolina Bays. Scattering the east coast of the United States from New Jersey all the way down to Florida with a small patch to the west in Nebraska and Kansas, we find hundreds of thousands of these giant elliptical depressions with raised rims ranging in sizes from 10 feet to three miles in length. The Carolina Bays have been an elusive geological mystery that geologists and academics have been arguing over for decades and still, in my opinion, have yet to officially state a conclusive explanation for their origin. Now the name Carolina bays is a little misleading because we do not only find the ellipses in North and South Carolina. The name actually comes from the types of bay trees found in the swampy area. The first historical record of the ellipses being noticed dates back to 1848 when South Carolina state geologist Michael Turney spoke of the strange elliptical features found on the grounds of the East Coast. Then in 1895, L.C. Glenn pointed out the unique shapes and early geologists began to investigate and come up with ideas of their origin. However, without hindsight, they didn't have enough information to come to any actual conclusion, resulting in many different ideas for the origin of these elliptical features that is still raging on to this day. Then everything took a turn in the 1930s when the first photographs of the ellipses was taken by Fairchild Aerial Surveys. Fairchild was hired by the Ocean Forest Company to take aerial photography of 500 square miles of the coastal plain of South Carolina. These early photographs not only revealed the true scale and size of the largest ellipses and how many of them there are, but the very unique northwest to southeast orientation they're all pointing. And as somebody who has seen the Carolina Bays with my own eyes at 4,000 feet altitude and took this video, I can only imagine what was going through the pilot and photographer's head when they first saw them. And now with modern technology using LIDAR, we can truly appreciate the scale and abundance of the Carolina Bays that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. Finally, in 1933, they were given the name Carolina Bays by F.A. Milton and William Shriver, who proposed the idea that they were the result of a meteor shower bombardment that hit the ground. And yes, I can understand why they would think that, and many have compared them to the surface of the moon. However, the fatal flaw of the direct impact hypothesis being the mechanism that created the Carolina Bays is that no evidence has ever been found in any core samples taken inside of the bays to suggest an extraterrestrial impact. So the current accepted geological explanation given for the creation of the bays is that strong winds over a long period of time from multiple directions blew against lakes and bodies of water to make the water circulate, trans transporting sand out to the edges to create these ovals. The wind hypothesis was put to the test in 1977 by Ray Koksarowski, where he took a pan of sand and pressed a circular indentation into the sand and filled it with water. Then he took multiple fans pointing in opposite directions and blew against the water, and this was the result of several hours. He would go on to claim victory with this experiment, even though he did not create a uniform ellipse multiple times, but also he artificially created the depression in the sand himself, which kind of automatically disproves this experiment. And as stated before, there have been many ideas to explain the mechanism on the creation of the Carolina Bays from being sinkholes to schools of fish when ocean levels were much higher, created the ovals or giant beavers during the Pleistocene, and even aliens. Yep, gotta throw the aliens in there. It's also worth pointing out that the Carolina Bays are only found within the United States. Nowhere else on Earth do we find these unique ellipses. So anybody attempting to explain the Carolina Bays using uniformitarianism needs to explain that. However, in 2010, Michael E. Davis and J. L. Gilbred were mapping out the Carolina Bays and their orientation and made a remarkable discovery. They made the observation that the bays to the north had a much shallower orientation than the ones to the south. As you move down the coastline, the bays begin to rotate more to the north. This observation, also knowing that the Nebraska and Kansas Carolina Bays have the opposite orientation pointing to the northeast to southwest, they decided to try something crazy. By drawing a line from the longest point of a given ellipse and extending it outward, all of the ellipses now converge into one spot over top of Michigan. However, if you attempt this on a flat map drawing straight lines, your results might look like this. It isn't until you calculate for the curvature of the Earth, the Coriolis effect, and travel time that all the ellipses converge over top of Saginaw Crater in Michigan, with Saginaw Crater itself also being an ellipse. So the new radical idea is that during the Pleistocene, the Laurentide ice sheet extended far enough down to cover the northern United States over top of Michigan. During this glacial maximum, there was a celestial impact into the glaciers sitting on top of Michigan, ejecting trillions of tons of ice and debris into the atmosphere. This 
ejecta, ranging in size from a small vehicle to a baseball stadium, came raining from the sky and pelted the ground so violently the scars can still be seen today. And this could explain why all of the Carolina Bays have the same orientation pointing to the same spot and why no extraterrestrial material was ever found because it was terrestrial ice and it melted away. And one last little fact that you probably didn't know about is that the Venus flytrap is only naturally found within the Carolina Bay swamps. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and if you enjoyed it please hit that like button down below and if you want to see some more hit that subscribe button as well. Also don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I'll put links for those down below along with the Discord. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you all next time. Bye.